This week's Ask Dr. Dury question is from a patient who has the translocation 414 abnormality. And so this means that when the bone marrow was done, most likely at the time of diagnosis, fish testing showed a problem with chromosome 4 and 14 with a switching of these two chromosomes. This is a type of abnormality that is called an intermediate risk. And so this means that uh, many treatments will work well in this situation, but oftentimes the length of the remission or the response is shorter than average. And so this particular patient asks, what treatment should I use now? I had a very excellent response with Velcade up front, but now the myeloma has relapsed. And so what are the additional options and therapy that could be considered? The good news in this situation is that there are, in fact, several options. Uh, the first uh, option that had been offered to the patient was the use of an imid. Uh, first of all, revlimid or possibly pomalidomide, uh, the most recent imid approved by the FDA. Of these two imids, uh, the data would suggest that perhaps pomalidomide is uh, more effective and could give a better and more sustained benefit. The next option, however, is to consider another drug like Velcade. Velcade is a proteasome inhibitor, and so we are fortunate to have available to us a, a next-generation proteasome inhibitor called Carfilzomib, commercial name Kyprolis. And so this type of drug, a proteasome inhibitor, is likely to be quite active in this setting of the T414 abnormality. And so this should definitely be strongly considered. In the relapse setting, uh, many times the relapse can be quite aggressive. And uh, these days, we often consider using not just a single drug, but perhaps a combination to achieve a deeper and a more sustained benefit. And so in this situation, a combination to consider would be carfilzomib combined with pomalidomide and dexamethasone, this three-drug regimen. A follow-up question that the patient had was, well, what about the role of stem cell transplant? This patient had not received a stem cell transplant, and the important thing to remember is that in this setting, a stem cell transplant, an autologous stem cell transplant, ASCT can still be beneficial. And so this would definitely be one of the things to be on the list of options. And so this is a situation where these various pros and cons of different options need to be discussed carefully with the treating physician. As I said at the beginning, the good news is that there are several options. But these need to be reviewed and considered in terms of the benefit and possible side effects and impact on work and all kinds of issues that could be uh, personally important. And so uh, discuss with the doctor and come up with uh, what could be one of several, several options that could, could work uh, well in this situation.